When applying mathematics in practical situations, one often has to solve equations or find largest or smallest values of a given function. Now the first thing to figure out is whether these equations have solutions at all or whether these functions have extreme values or not. And if we know that these functions are continuous, then we may be able to figure out solutions and we may be able to find largest and smallest values. Hello everybody, my name is Mika Seppele. In this presentation I defined in a very gentle way what continuous functions are and I will discuss some of their properties. Continuity gently. This picture shows the graph of a function which is continuous, that is the green graph, and the graph of a function which is discontinuous, that's the red graph. The easiest way to define continuity is to say that a function is continuous if one can draw its graph without having to lift the pen from the paper. The definition of continuity in terms of being able to draw the graph of a function without having to lift the pen from the paper is not very precise. A mathematical way of de defining continuity is that continuous functions have limits everywhere and the limit values agree with the values of the function. More precisely, we may speak about continuity at a point. We say that a function f is continuous at the point x equals x0 if the limit of f of x as x approaches x0 exists and agrees with the value of the function at that point. If f is not continuous at x0, then it is discontinuous. So this picture shows a function that has left and right hand limits at the point where its values jump. But these two limits are different. So this function doesn't have a limit at that point and is therefore discontinuous. We may speak about left continuous functions. We say that a function f is left continuous at x equals x0 if the left hand limit of the function f of x, that is the limit as x approaches x0 through numbers smaller than x0 exists and agrees with the value of the function at that point. So this particular graph, the red graph, is the graph of a function which is left continuous at the point where its values jump. Likewise, we say that a function is right continuous at some point x0 if the limit of f of x as x approaches x0 through numbers larger than x0 exists and this limit agrees with the value of the function. Again, here we have our old friend, this red graph, which is a graph of a function that does have the right limit at the point where it charms, but the right limit is not the value of the function at that point. Therefore, this particular function is not right continuous at the point where its values jump. Next, we define continuity on an interval. We say that a function f is continuous on an open interval if it is continuous at each point of the interval. A function f is said to be continuous on the closed interval from a to b if it is continuous on the open interval from a to b and left continuous at b and right continuous at a. Continuous functions have a very important property which is called the intermediate value theorem. It says that if f is continuous on an interval then it takes any value between any two of its values. 
So here we see the graph of a function which is continuous on the interval from a to b. By the intermediate value theorem, we may conclude that the function f takes the value 0 between a and b because f at a is negative and f at b is positive. Therefore, it must take the value 0 which is between f and a and f at b and therefore the equation f of x equals 0 has a solution between a and b. The red graph is the graph of a function g which is not continuous on the interval from c to d because it is discontinuous at one point in the interval. The function g takes a negative value at the point c and a positive value at the point d but since g is discontinuous we may not conclude that the equation g of x equals zero has solutions in fact in this case it has no solutions. Continuous functions have very nice properties of which the most important is the intermediate value theorem. So it is important to know what kind of functions are continuous and here is an example of a continuous function x cubed minus x. Its graph is the blue curve shown here in this picture. This is a continuous function. More generally all polynomials, rational functions, trigonometric functions and their inverses are continuous at points where they take finite values. The function g of x which is defined by setting g of x equals x divided by the absolute value of x when x is different from 0 and 0 otherwise is discontinuous at x equals 0. x divided by the absolute value of x is 1 if x is positive and negative 1 if x is negative. Therefore, this function g has left and right hand side limits at x equals 0. These limits are negative 1 and 1. They do not agree, therefore the function does not have a limit at that point. The value of the function at 0 is 0. Therefore, it is not even left continuous nor right continuous at this point. It is simply discontinuous. The function h of x which is defined by setting sine of x divided by x for x different from 0 is continuous. We may set the value of this function h to be 1 at x equals 0 and if we do that then we get a continuous function which is defined for all values of x. This is so because the limit of sine of x divided by x as x approaches 0 is 1. Therefore, this function h of x becomes continuous at x equals 0 if its value for that point is defined to be 1. The following functions are continuous when they take finite values. First, polynomials. They take everywhere finite values and they are continuous everywhere. Rational functions, that is quotients of polynomials, they take finite values at points where the denominator is not zero and there they are continuous. The inverse functions of the above functions are continuous functions everywhere where they are defined. Additionally, the following functions are continuous where they are Define and take finite values, that is all power functions, x to the power r, where r is a real number. In general, x to the power r, if r is not uh, an integer, is defined only for x non-negative. So whenever the function x to the power r is defined, it is continuous. All exponential functions of the type a to the power x where a is some positive number they are all continuous in particular the exponential function e to the power x is continuous all trigonometric functions are continuous where they are defined and the inverse functions of 
all the above functions are continuous functions where they are defined. That is, logarithmic functions and arcus functions, they are continuous functions. If f and g are continuous functions at some point x0 and c is a real number, then the following functions are continuous at x equals x0. First, f of x plus g of x, c times f of x, f of x times g of x, and f of x divided by g of x, assuming that g at that point x0 does not take the value 0. More generally, if f is continuous at x equals a, and g continues at f of a, then the composed function g composed with f is continuous at x equals a. As an example of the use of the above properties, consider the problem study the continuity of the function f of x equals square root of 1 plus sine of x squared minus 1 and that difference divided by x squared. Now we first observe that x squared is a continuous function and the sine function is also continuous. Therefore the composed function sine at x squared is a continuous function. And this also means that um, since 1 plus sine of x squared is always non-negative, square root of 1 plus sine of x squared minus 1 is defined and continuous for all values of x. Since x squared is 0, if x equals 0, f is defined and continuous for all x different from 0. But uh, the function f is undefined by this expression for x equals 0. So we have concluded that the function f of x, which equals square root of 1 plus sine at x squared minus 1 divided by x squared is defined and continuous for all x different from 0. Now the function is undefined if x equals 0 and now the question is, is it possible to define the value of the function f at 0 so that the function f would be continuous also at that point? To find that out, we have to compute the limit as x approaches 0 of square root 1 plus sine of x squared minus 1 divided by x squared. In order to compute the limit, we have to rewrite the expression. We multiply and divide the whole expression by the conjugate of the numerator. That is, we multiply and divide everything by square root of 1 plus sine at x squared plus 1. This quantity is always positive, therefore we may do the division. And we observe that square root of 1 plus sine at x squared minus 1 divided by x squared becomes first square root of 1 plus sine at x squared minus 1, and that difference multiplied by square root of 1 plus sine at x squared plus 1, and that product divided by x squared times square root of 1 plus sine at x squared plus 1. Now the numerator simplifies. It is simply 1 plus sine at x squared minus 1. And here 1 and minus 1 cancel out, so the expression simplifies to sine at x squared divided by x squared times square root of 1 plus sine at x squared plus 1. But now, sine at x squared divided by x squared approaches 1 as x approaches 0. That's one of the important results that we have seen earlier. And the expression square root 1 plus sine at x squared plus 1 approaches the value 2 as x approaches 0. Therefore, we conclude that the limit of this expression as x approaches 0 is 1 half. So the limit of f of x as x approaches 0, that is the limit of 
square root of 1 plus sine at x squared minus 1 divided by x squared as x approaches 0 is 1 half. This means that if we define the function f at 0 to be 1 half, then the function is continuous also at that point. Here the blue graph is the graph of this function f. To summarize, I remind you that we defined continuous functions by saying that a function is continuous at a point if its value agrees with its limit value at that point, and uh, if a function is continuous at all points of an interval, then it is continuous on that interval. Continuous functions have the very important intermediate value theorem property, that is, uh, if f is continuous on an interval, then f takes any value between any two of its values.